Adventurers! Welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. This is Tom, that's Lotus, and you guys know who we are. We're here to talk about the lore of the Elder Scrolls, and this week, Lotus, we're talking about some very mysterious people. Yeah, this is weird because it's like a transition off of... Locations? <sighs> locations yeah. but also sort of still involving a specific location right leads into a specific guild right well group. so all of like, all of the lore kind of intersects other lore right so it's hard to like take something apart and categorize it as one thing without kind of bleeding into other topics so we're, we've gone through all the major locations we're going through these other like more specific and interesting locations like black reach which we recently went over and i was like well what about artaeum island of artaeum sigic order i'm sure there's some really interesting lore there but I was like, wait, we haven't done the Sigic Order. So you can't do the island that they make disappear without explaining about them first. So we're going back to different factions, I guess. And I'm sure there are some factions that we really haven't covered. But let's talk about the Sigic Order because these guys are super cool. They show up a few different times in the games and they seem to have magic and abilities and a mystery surrounding them that isn't ever fully accepted explained there's a lot that's just kind of hinted to um they're you, also yeah go ahead all right so so one thing that i figure it's worth bringing up um is they're an incredibly old order in the series however they're relatively new in the series from a game perspective if that makes any sense right so th they really we never actually encountered the sigic order we we like got a little taste of it in in skyrim and then it really they did a great job of kind of like fleshing it out and making it much much more in uh the elder scrolls online prior to that it kind of was just like non-existent even yeah. though they were mentioned there yeah it, mentioned, it, mentioned in the lore so like the monomyth is one of those right. classic old books and it it mentions the Sigics, and it's one of the only locations I can find that even refers yeah. to them in this weird name. So most places write <laughs> yes, this Sigic, is my favorite. right? P S I J I K I C, and some some locations will will you know how this stuff goes. Sometimes they write the name slightly different in certain places, whether that's an intentional or an accident, who knows? But sometimes they'll write it with two eyes after the J, and in this mono myth, which is one of the oldest books in the series, it goes way back. The Sigic Order is mentioned, but it is spelled the order of P-S-J-J-J-J. This is like a, a Kirk Brydian kind of thing, right? I, like That's my favorite. It's just so ridiculous. Like the order of <laughs> Like, what is that? And, and then I was curious. I was like, does the word Sigic sounds like it's Greek for something or Latin maybe? And so I did a little bit of digging on that as well. And I was like... Okay, what is what is Sigic? What is the word origin of Sigic? What, what is the definition? The only things that come up are Elder Scrolls links. That's it. Yeah. It is not one of those words where they took it from some other actual meaning and language and worked it into their world. Like um like the the oblivion realm of apocrypha, right? Like apocrypha right. is a real word. It means a thing. It's you use it in biblical studies. Like that is that is a word. And I was like, well, Sigic might be like that. Nope, it's not. It's it is a word that they made up that feels like a very real world thing, but I can't figure out what it is. So props to them for that. But let's hear. Let's get into it a little bit. We've got the uh, UESP wiki article, which is a they do a great job. This article on the Sigic Order is particularly well uh, written and draws a lot of connections across the board to uh, their involvement with different interesting people and, and locations and yeah. things like that. So. Here, let's dig it, dig right into it. The Sigic Order uh, is the oldest monastic group in Tamriel devoted to the study and practice of mysticism, which they call the Old Ways or Elder Way. They make their home on the Isle of Artaeum in the Somerset Archipelago. They have often been criticized for hoarding their knowledge, in turn mocking other scholars for not seeing their way. So immediately right out of the gate, mysterious group, 
oldest monastic order. Now, when we're talking oldest monastic order, we are going back to the time of the settling of the Somerset Isles. Right. We're talking real old. Real, real, real old. old. Yeah. So like the this is this is before the division of the different groups of elves. If you follow that theory that they divided and spread out across the continent, this is very, very early. The Altmer or the Aldmer, the Altmer, like that whole transition there. And then there was this order. And some of what is going on in uh, Altmer society at the time is there is a restructuring, a social and religious restructuring where they have defined which gods they will worship. Who are the Aedra and who are the spirits that they worship and who yep. are the Daedra, the ones that they don't worship, or who are the ones that they think they descended from and who are the ones who are not included in that. But there is a group very early on, this is a pre-first era, where they were like, no, we're not going to change from the old ways. We're going to worship the things that we, the, the gods and beings, uh, the, the ways of mysticism, types of magic, maybe even that got cut out when the, the Altmer society decided that there was just this one little circle of things that was OK and everything else was out. So this is like the initial group Lotus of like rebels, but in a like we're the, they're more conservative. <laughs> Than I know the regular yeah. Altmer. <laughs> I know it's they're like they're rebels who wear monocles to the meetings. It's very awkward because they're <laughs> like they're they're the outliers, but they're you know we always joke that the Altmer and stuff like that are snooty and stuff like it's like this is like a level of snooty in that regard that's like super. Uh, above the normal which is really odd because usually when you think of like a rebel group it's more of like oh well this is too constricting and we want to like open things up and then with theirs it's like no this seems to be more organized more I limited mean, yeah more limited yeah They're very you know it, it the, the biggest thing of like a lot uh, alluded to earlier is the amount that they like they hoard knowledge like it's kind of you know in the year from as more like right? there's a lot of interesting parallels in that regard where it's just like it seems like they're just like nah this is ours like i don't think you're worthy to actually know this it's just like it's very condescending uh, yeah in a, in a yeah. lot of ways yeah but so what i'm what i'm gathering from the history of how this all kind of played out is that there were the people who were in control, the elves that were in control of Altmer society, and they decided to create basically this boundary that they they were going to decide which which beliefs were OK and which beliefs were not OK. And usually when that is done in historical contexts, it's done for power. You're consolidating power. You're putting the people who follow you on the inside and you're putting everyone else on the outside and the Sigic order seems to have realized that that was a political and a social decision not an actual decision based on reality or the nature of the world out there because they seem to have already tapped into a lot of what that actually means through their study and their knowledge and their connection to magical forces that we don't even understand and so it, it's like they're going, yeah, no, you guys are doing this all for the wrong reasons. We're going to stick to the things we know because we know that they're true. You can't just politicize the world into a different direction and just throw out all these other truths. Right. So um, that's not very popular when you're trying to fit into society. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it was mentioned actually earlier in chat that like it's kind of like they really are sort of like the the joking to our real life parallel of like the Illuminati. It's like, oh, how much do they control and stuff? And it seems like this type of order, except it, it's a it's a concrete thing, like so many things are in this world. Right. And it seems like that's sort of what they want to be, even if that's not always what's able to happen. But it's just like this overarching power that they decide what's okay and not okay and what should be distributed not distributed etc cetera, etc cetera, which is just it's a very creepy idea to have just looming over all of tamriel and we haven't even gotten into the creepy factor of like well i assume we'll move into that in a minute but like 
the creepy factor of like even where they live we mentioned that it's like yeah. part of the somerset isles but like even that isn't just normal because you know not everybody should even be able to see where they live it's like right right so it, okay. it is very mysterious it's very guarded now is that yeah. because they are trying to be elitist and, and different or is it because they are guarding some very <clears throat> important and powerful right. secrets that they just the average person really should not be sure and to into. a degree they might mean well uh, in many regards if it's like well yeah we're doing this for the general safety like because there are some situations when you encounter them the idea is not to just be like oh well we just don't want people to have this in, mm -hmm. in many cases it's like okay this is like really concerning if this gets out we need to like really like try to keep this under control so said thing doesn't go haywire cause these problems right uh, right it, it provide way too much to, for, for a group that could be trying to do it for nefarious purposes and stuff like that so it's even though we've kind of like alluded to the fact that they're very you know haughty toddy i don't know what you call them. It's like this guy <laughs> well, describing all these weird yeah. ways of describing them yeah. there, there might be also it, it's not just to be a set of douchebags like right, they, they might right. be trying to do well even if their approach is a little insufferable in some ways sure well i mean think about anything like if you do something for a career for a long period of time and in this case we're talking about elves they they live a much longer life than you or i do if you're yeah, doing right. something for a long period of time and you are an expert at that thing then you're going to find anybody else's opinions about the thing you do kind of quaint and simple and yeah, you can be nice about it and be like, well, there's a little bit too more to it here. Let me share a little bit of my knowledge with you. Or you can kind of be a jerk about it. But that still doesn't neither of those methods. Just even let's say you choose the jerk method. That doesn't mean your information is wrong. <laughs> it just means C that correct. you could have been nicer like, about the way yeah, you, you, you handled it. You might have just handled it like a douche. <laughs> right, right. And, and sure, you know, I, I can see that like from a certain perspective if you have a, a a more clear glimpse of reality and the true dangers and perils and how to deal with those things right then you're probably going to have a certain opinion about people who don't or think they do and are spreading false information so sure which that has a lot of parallels to real life oftentimes <laughs> sure 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 so here so let's talk about some of their secretness they so the yep. order the way they choose their members is quote by a complex ritualized method not understood by the common people which totally makes sense because they have an understanding of things that nobody else does so how are how is everyone else going to understand what they're going to do to choose those members and the the membership over time has been very limited and there are there are ages of the world where the membership was actually very small like a dozen and a half people or two dozen people right um and then the numbers swelled again into the fourth age which is or actually right before the oblivion crisis and yep. then into the fourth age which is interesting because they, their magic not only has something to do with uh this mysticism but there's a certain sense of they have some control over time. They have a little bit of foreknowledge of things that will happen before they actually do. They have um, power over the nature of reality. And we've seen that in magic in the Elder Scrolls. A lot of people try to have power over the nature of reality. We've even talked about the towers being a source of power that controls the reality around those towers. Yeah, exactly. But to have that among individuals in a in a specific order of people and like you were saying with the ability to even make their island disappear it's yeah just, there are periods of time and it happens at least two different times in history uh, in the early ages and then in the fourth age where the island just disappears and usually the justification is they have some sense that something's going down and they're protecting themselves they need to like right. get off the it, grid yeah it's like okay we gotta we gotta get out of here because if you know our stuff is compromised for example it's like well that's going to be a way bigger issue than us being able to observe or interfere when the situation suits us as opposed to you know say they're just chilling out in the somerset isles on arteum and it's just like oh you know for the sake of a series villain, the slowed decide, hey, it's slowed time, and they attack <laughs> the slowed. island. <laughs> it's slowed. It's slow time, it's, everybody. It's slow time. <laughs> um, but like that, if they remove themselves from that whole situation, that is no longer an option, at least in theory. I mean, there's magic flying all over the place throughout this series, so 
you know, I'm sure there's ways around it, but at least to most, it wouldn't be as easily accessible. Right. Now, uh, the, the way they appear changes over time as well. I find this interesting. In the earliest uh, recordings of them, they were often known as gray cloaks. They would wear gray as their main color. But the colors seem to change with time and don't seem to be identified by like the Sigic order having a certain color scheme. And so everybody right. who's a part of it has to wear a uniform or anything like that. Uh, right. By the second um, era in ESO, we see more like blue and gold. And then by yeah. the fourth era in Skyrim, we see like the few characters we meet are wearing like a pale yellow and more of these like tans and and leather right. type colors. It, it definitely shifts a bit. And it, it's interesting because like um, one of the things I had trouble because I've played so much ESO recently, um, the blue and gray, it's actually part of there's a, a Tales of Tribute deck in the game. Um the Sigic deck is a blue and gray. They tend to have a lot of blue and gray. But like you said, there's the, there's other color schemes. Right. So it's not like a uniform or anything like well, that. And it may have been a uniform color scheme for that time. very specific period of time. And right. then over time, it just kind of changed or there were different. I mean, we're talking about an organization that has lasted over four ages of the world. Yes. So um, like you can imagine plans for what they're wearing and how they organize are probably different and different parts of right and history. one of the things um that i actually think is very cool um for for them is their house banner which you can just see it's like at the top of the uesp itself mm -hmm. um <clears throat> if you decide to look it up uh at any point people it it's just like it's it's a pretty cool symbol or whatever but it's like this gray banner and it's got again like a light blue emblem on the front of it which is like the color scheme throughout eso for the most part um and it gives this i don't know uh, it, to me it definitely gives off like a weird mystical vibe kind of like the background uh for for your set right now if you're watching yeah very on i very specifically chose all the blue and yeah and because it, it feels kind of sigicky at least yeah in it's ESO. a little ethereal like yeah yeah. So uh, we also know that they pop up during times of turmoil. They seem to be trying to do good when they can, but uh, they also stay out of politics a lot. They're still very mysterious. Yep. And uh, they have this this way of just kind of like showing up where they need to be in order to try to adjust the world in a certain direction and then they kind of disappear again <laughs> they, they, right they do that sort um, of thing yeah and i mean without oh i mean the game came out in 2011 at this point but without overtly trying to spoil the mages or the college of winterhold quest line um their input in the, <laughs> that quest line is pretty important and it's for the sake of trying to help not like a hey, we're here to just prove how great we are. Like, th there's there's a lot, you know, th the idea there is that they are trying to lend a hand when it is needed, and it's their choice to come through their portal in that situation right. and, like, provide what need, you know, what's needed and then kind of, like, zoot, peace out. Okay, right. you, you're not, you don't deal with them again after that. That's, it's a very limited interaction in Skyrim with them. Yeah, in in Skyrim, they're they're not pulling for the Nords or the Empire. They're not nope. pulling for the Thalmer. They they yep. they are very distinctly separate from all yes. of that. And highly neutral. Highly neutral. <laughs> uh, probably because they have an understanding about the way things play out in ways that we don't. Yep. And they're playing they're playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers. Right, and and oftentimes, uh, as as much as it tends not to be the way that battles are fought but it's rare that either side of a conflict is entirely correct right <laughs> um yeah so like usually it's some type of medium that would be the the best solution so you know when you have two factions like you know during the war in skyrim both sides are not looking like they don't want to compromise that's not the objective of the storm cloaks or the imperials that right. that's not it whereas in terms of like the sigics it's like maybe we should make some concessions here and like maybe <laughs> maybe we like balance things out for the best and, and you know a little of both might be the answer but yeah. obviously that's you know a lot harder to well that seems to be the what most of the time and i'm, I'm making broad assumptions here but, yeah, the, the, but let, the, let me just are, let me not just say black and white every most, like this. Most of the time, cooperation 
leads to being able to take on the real problems in ways that conflict doesn't allow. <laughs> Correct. Another way to look at this is the powers in our world, be they colonial or political, often like to divide the people who are underneath those powers because if they're fighting each other, they can't band together to actually deal with the real problems. Right, exactly. And it's like, is that always the case? No, as we constantly bring up with this show specifically about this series, things are in a lot of shades of gray. It's very rarely black and white. It'll yeah. happen every now and then, but it's it's pretty rare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go thank our patrons and we will be back in just a minute, but we're gonna go through kind of a quick timeline and some of the individuals and groups that were affected by or influenced by or whatever. And I think you might be a little bit surprised, so don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. This is a Morak Dragonborn, and you are educating yourself to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. All right, here we are in the middle of the show. This is where we get to thank our new patrons, and it's been two weeks because I was on vacation last week, but then I came back for the Starfield Direct, and quickly did a Starfield Lorecast episode, which I dropped on the feed. So I hope you all enjoyed that. It had been a while since the previous one. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we'd be kind of been on and off, and then there wasn't much news. And so now we are back. In fact, we earlier today just recorded a new episode. So we've got two episodes, one that came out already, another one going out only on the Starfield Lorecast feed. So if you are interested in Starfield, and I would highly recommend that if you are a fan of Bethesda games at all, go look at the Starfield Direct, go to my Robots Radio. YouTube channel yeah. look at our reactions to it or listen to that episode lots of awesome stuff coming it, it, it totally blew us away and um, if you if you're gonna be playing the game then go listen to the Starfield Lorecast um, but it's been two weeks so we have some new patrons we have Christopher D Jan Z Caleb S Jared E Sampo P Joshua M Peyton F Northern Loon and Miroslav F. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Welcome to the Patreon. Thank you for being here and supporting the show. And big thanks to all 123 of our current patrons, including our Daedric Princes who get shout outs every week. Jacob K, Kiracy, and Noodle El Dente. Thank you for your support. We can't do this show without you. We, genu we genuinely appreciate your support and for being here because you are what makes this happen. Everyone who listens to the show and especially our patrons and people who leave us reviews on apple podcasts will get read out on future episodes of the show if it's a five-star review and we don't have any new ones of those that have popped up in my feed right now but if you drop one in there we'll definitely read it out in the future so if you're interested in joining us on the patreon checking out all the different things you can get like t-shirts i know people are getting their hoodies and stuff we have hoodies Sorry, and a couple of those t-shirts very cool very cool stuff uh ad free episodes uh, any little bit absolutely helps go to patreon.com slash elder scrolls lorecast and go check it out and uh thanks for all the support all right let's yeah. move on with the rest of the show you're listening to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast, dear child of Sidis. That is why the Night Mother loves you. All right, let's go through the timeline. I'm going to read out certain sections from the UESP, and then, like we normally do, we read it out, and we st that's a jumping off point, and then we add some other information, some other uh, perspectives on it. So, the early years, the Order was founded during the early settlements of the Somerset Isle by the Aldmer to divine Padme's, divine being a verb here, to divine Padme's eternal and ever-changing mystery. So their whole goal initially was, what is Padme? How do we know more about Padme? Treating him as just as ineffable an entity as Anu, naming themselves after Siji, which was a derivation of his original name, PSJJJJ. Deep lore cut there. Anu's original name was PSJJJJ. I don't think I'd ever written that anywhere else. I, yeah, that is weird. Yeah, so they're named after 
and new no maybe no that's padme's original name is psj that's what it's referring to so they're named after the padmaic order is really what that means um during this time there was a movement to change the religion of elmer's society instead of pure ecumenical ecumenical that's the way you say that word ancestor worship the aldmer of somerset began worshiping only the ancestors claimed by the elite of the aldmeri society like we were discussing before from which the traditional admiri pantheon of adra emerged a group of dissident aldmer elders rejected this change and left somerset to settle on the nearby isle of arteum and um this is interesting the order was first mentioned in writing in the year 1e 20 the 20th year of the first era by the breton sage vornet who traveled to artem to meet with the sigic right master lach i i i think is how you pronounce that i i always said iachesis 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 but again my pronunciation highly suspect you reading out the uh who knows? patreon subscribers compared to me reading them out on tales i'm gonna go with your pronunciation sometimes because uh i don't know yeah I, I don't think I'm well known for my pronunciation skills of names. Neither am I. Talk to my uh, <laughs> talk to my Lord of the Rings lore cast listeners. Oh my God, I'm so bad. Um, <laughs> uh, in these early days, Sidics were described as counselors to royalty and teachers of the Elder Way, a philosophy of meditation and study related to the magic of mysticism. And this is the beginning of the conversation about how their magic is probably a step away from the normal magic that we're seeing there's something else going on here they're tapping into some other source beyond yeah. just like regular magic that comes from the light of the sun and the moon and the star or you know, any of that weirdness because there, right there's all sorts of weirdness around that um they also kept the entrance of the dreaming cave a portal to oblivion so who was an honorary member of the sigics and not all of the sigics were altmer so obviously wasn't um but they did bring in members from across the you know all the different races and so himself an honorary member used this portal to speak to the daedric princes on several occasions it kind of makes sense that so would be part of this organization or at least be connected to it. related yeah, yeah. it's it's got to have some connection for sure yeah so this is interesting because this section goes into the whole disappearing of the island but also some individuals whose names should be familiar to you years later the now famous famous vanis galarian came to artam with an altmer soothsayer here vanis met manny marco a fellow student at the time we get a lot of the story about how this all is connected in eso so if you're interested in playing through some of those storylines this stuff is very detailed in that um, the two grew to become great friends they became masters of the mystic arts but after long years galarian discovered that manny marco was using mysticism to manipulate souls and the dead Disgusted by this act, which was considered profane, Vanis confronted his longtime friend below the Sephiroth, Sephira, Sephora, Sephora Tower. Sure, sure, Sephora, sure. Kepora. Mm. Isn't Sephora a, like Sephora? A, a, that's I like think Sephora is like a, a, a makeup beauty supply place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the beautiful tower. Uh, Perfect. Galarian begged Mana Marco to repent, but his pleas fell on deaf ears. Mana Marco and the Sidics who agreed with his practices left Artam never to return. Galarian himself went on to found the Mages Guild. That's where you recognize the name from an organization which spread the knowledge and practice of magic much further than the Sigic order had. And you can see these two different ideologies, right? Man and Marco is all about getting power for himself. And how did he become so powerful? He was tapping into the mysticism of the Sigics initially and expanding his power out like that. Um, Vanis Galarian was going, okay, the way the Sigics are working is creating these like evil villains why don't we normalize the use of magic and teach people how to control it in a healthy way and then created the mages guild so you have the division both of those kind of coming off the sigic order but the, neither of those things meant that the sigic order was gone it was still doing its thing just with neither of those two individuals from that point on what do you think about that lotus <sighs> that's a lot <laughs> it's a lot it's really cool it's like the foundations of man and marco's like power yeah, and the mages guild and all of that stuff they're so intertwined with so much which is funny because it's so like we said it's so behind the scenes but it's so attached to so many things that you deal with all the time yeah like as as 
I mean, how often is Van Marco a, a villain in the series? Like, <laughs> like every other game. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's like, <laughs> this is what I mean. It's like, it's just, there's, there's little connections to this group pretty much everywhere. And it seemed like until the recent couple of games, they haven't overtly kind of made it a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So then there's a whole section that goes into all of the events of ESO. You can play through all of that stuff. Um, Somerset Isle expansion, all of that stuff. We're not going to spoil a lot of that. That would be its own episode to dig into that some more. So we're going to leave that for now. But there's this section that says changes in politics. The order's influence waxed and waned over the next several centuries. According to legend, in the third era 110, the Sigic Order magically created a freak storm that led to the de- defeat of Orgnum by Emperor Antiochus and the King of Somerset. This is highly unusual as the Sigics have rarely participated directly in wars or other political conflicts. And it's been suggested that Queen Patima or P- Potima, whatever you pronounce uh, that, Patima, Patima uh, manipulated the order into taking action for her own purposes. Emperor Uriel V was much influenced by the council in the earlier days, in his early days, most glorious parts, uh, the for the more glorious parts of his reign, before his disastrous attack on Akavir. We talked about Uriel, Uriel V and the attack on Akavir and getting stuck maybe over there, and maybe is still alive, we don't know. Like, that whole thing also tied to the Sigics and their abilities to influence or, or his abilities to find influence from them but it's this weird thing where like one they were being more political during this era it seems or were manipulated by these powerful people and two they seem to have the power to control things like storms at a distance so again that whole manipulating of nature thing yeah that's I don't know. That seems like a pretty handy power to have, especially because you see it oftentimes with the Maormer. They they tend to have like that type of sea magic or stuff like that. Yeah. And, yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me that that's a form of mysticism, maybe. Right. Maybe Somebody what in, they're digging into is the same mystical sure. foundations that the Sigics understand. And and you know what with this group kind of being outside the normal quarrels and stuff like that would it seem incredibly out of the ordinary if there was a maumer in their ranks no not really or if they I, hadn't studied them and learned from them. yeah or exactly so it's like yeah it, it, it's not out of the realm of possibility or that the maumer broke away from that altmer lineage early enough and took some of that knowledge with them that could be part of it yeah that could be a thing too uh, Darth in chat says, do you think Dagoth Ur would have been a part of the order if he woke up a little earlier? <laughs> uh, I, I get the sense that he was much more of a, like, if only to just get the information and then and leave them. Like, Yeah, he, he seems like a Man not, Marco situation. Yeah, not much of a team player, I don't think. <laughs> um, but maybe? Uh, eh, I mean, they were still around then. Who's to say that he didn't actually gain some knowledge from them in some indirect way? you know stole knowledge somehow um so after uriel v the the last four emperors don't have a whole lot to do with the sigics they kind of uh, separated and, and disconnected right yeah uh then the activities of the order during the fourth era are still a mystery this is the part where it gets into skyrim and we're going like what's actually going on here so that leads us to the second disappearance of Artaeum. The first disappearance of Artaeum happens way early in the histories, uh, and then the second one happens in the fourth era. The Sigic Order and Artaeum vanished again around the turn of the second century of the fourth era. The exact reason for the island's disappearance is still unknown, but it coincided with the Void Knights and the start of a new wave of expansion for the Aldmeri Dominion, which we know they weren't, they're not in lockstep with the Aldmeri Dominion at all, right? Um, what is known is that at least some members of the order are still observing events in Tamriel when the Eye of Magnus, these are the events in Skyrim, was discovered by members of the College of Winterhold in the fourth era 201. A few Sigics associated a college or assisted a college member in wrestling control of the artifact from a Thalmor agent going so far as to arrive in person to retrieve the eye. And if you play through Skyrim, you've played through these events. So that particular point is pretty interesting this whole why are they so interested in the eye of magnus 
what are they doing? And like you mentioned before, they're very neutral, but they show up yeah. in this very, very conflicting time period with all this other crazy stuff going on, but they seem very focused on this one thing. Yeah, no, it, it's weird because it's, <laughs> It just makes me think of Futurama with like the the neutral planet there, but it's like they're like aggressively neutral most of the time. Like they will go out of their way to stay out of situations, and it is really weird when they actually pick a side. Like with the organ organum battle that you had mentioned, right. that was like one of the very few where it's like, oh my god, they actually like decided something needed to be dealt with overtly so right. it's just like it's it's interesting when something becomes such a concern that they actually step in as yeah. opposed to just observe casually from a distance <laughs> right right and um i i didn't note the the time of the first disappearance this is around the second era 230s at some point is when the island first disappears and yep. then by the events of eso which is like 582 they're still dealing with that whole thing. Um, yeah. So it kind of plays into that. So the middle of like, the beginning of the second era and then the beginning of the fourth era, Island disappears. Something's going on. They're like, nope, we're out. Poof, gone. Right. Weird, right? Like what? <laughs> what else is going on with them? Um, I, I have a feeling there's a lot of stuff they know that we don't know. And maybe the people behind the scenes, the writers at Bethesda have a sense of it but haven't really fleshed it all out highly likely <laughs> yeah we <laughs> would just, be my guess we're just giving these little windows into like they've probably written like you know a multi-page thing about like oh here's here's what the psychic order was doing behind the scenes this is why they wanted the eye of magnus and we just don't tell any of the players this stuff yet right so maybe we'll get more info in the next elder scrolls could be yeah could be. i mean just you know whenever that may be <laughs> whenever that may be whenever that may be so we've talked about um their their powers and a little bit of how they use what's normal seems like normal magic but then they tie in this mysticism stuff and there's a section here i, I thought this part was particularly interesting the sigic order has at least 863 archives and libraries not including the right master's personal collection with most of these being in quasi planes and hermetic mind spheres do you have a hermetic mind sphere? How do I get one of I those? I kind of want one, whatever the hell it is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Within these you, archives. Do you think they sell them in the Bethesda store? I hope so. <laughs> is, oh, that's that's what the stash boxes are. Oh. They're hermetic mind seals. And then obviously Zargo or whatever his name is like, is like, yeah, yeah, sure. uh, Zargo. it's good to see you again, my friend. Here, let me open this hermetic mind seer and give you four or maybe five cards. That's how he talks right um i don't know i've never got a crate <laughs> you've never gotten a crate even I've like never bought one no no, no but I, even I like a drop free. some of the yeah some, I, of the some of those drop ones i i actually kind of just remember those exist when people point out on stream that but you've like, opened you one of those before right and I, yeah but it's like i you can skip him so i don't oh, actually know I if see. i've ever heard him talk yeah that, well now that you now now you just now you now know i need to no right? you don't, don't go listen to it just trust me that that's exactly oh, all right so that's, that's exactly what it sounds, what like. sounds like oh i'll just play that yes. my, okay perfect problem, yeah this problem is Jazago. this is your crate also i'm pretty sure Jazago is just from skyrim <laughs> isn't just Gis so from skyrim i couldn't think of the name of the crate guy it's something <laughs> similar to that <laughs> help me out chat i don't remember i don't remember yeah. names very well i'm so bad at names um <laughs> anyway it could this part goes on. It says within these archives, texts related to Azra Nightwielder have been tampered with by shadow magic, making most references to the shadow mage unreliable. Um, so there's a whole lot of we wacky weirdness going on. Um, this interest, this part's really interesting. The Sigics have shown a special love of animals. They have created a breed of intelligent pig known as the Sigic Domino Pig. I believe I have one of these as a pet in ESO. Do you have one of these, Lotus? Uh, yes. Yeah, they can also create Sigic Beasts, cre uh, creatures conjured in the shape of their conjurer's desired creature form. They are dis or they're distinguishable from common fauna by having arcane body prints that the Order's monks use themselves. These are some of the other things you get out of crates if you ever open a crate. Which Lotus doesn't do, I guess. I, well, I get the free ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think these guys are in the free ones. These are in the, no. pay, the pay ones. No, I, 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 I know that you can get a little pet and a mount from the free ones, and I've never gotten either of those. Yeah, I've gotten, I got, I've like, gotten both. Nothing. I believe I've gotten both. 
Yeah. Is I, this from Drops? I, I nope, I have not. <laughs> yeah. I feel like they need to put more in those like basic crates because otherwise it's just like, well, they've been the yay, same more healing since potions. they were put in, aren't they? Yeah. I was going to say they're just crown gems pretty yeah. much. You just destroy whatever you're given and just move on. That's, yeah, that's basically it. Anyway. Ah, Paracuti. Uh, what? Para, oh, that, that, pa, Pacruti? Pacruti? Oh, it's Pacruti. Pa, pa, it's Pacruti. Pacruti. Welcome. Pacruti. Welcome, okay, friends. Pacruti, Pacruti, Pacruti says Outlander you will get <laughs> wonderful things. Yeah, that's right. Pacruti. Thank you, Outlander Frog. Outlander Frog. Yeah. Pacruti. Jizargo's close to Pacruti. They're just like yeah, almost basically. one letter that's the same. Maybe, maybe, what? No, I was going to say, it's like, what, what if it's Je Paracruti? <laughs> je Paracruti. <laughs> so there no, you I'm go, just getting like soul. bad Italian accent. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we've got the weird psychic stuff going on then really the story with the island is it's where they live and they've got this wonderful little complex that you go down you use the portals so the my assumption you know what as as i'm saying this now i don't know how accurate this is you go to the island right and it's got like in eso it's got like the like those beams above it like it, like a barrier you can see in the sky right and then have you ever looked up in artam I, I mean, it just looks like a really, I, I guess I, maybe I don't look at the sky offhand. box. Look at the sky box. The sky box is like, cause you can see magic Hyper morning, <laughs> but you can see magic like maybe. in the sky box. You can see like oh, these oh, it, barriers that are separating the island from what's outside the island. Okay. Oh, I, maybe, am I just not thinking of that? I guess I don't notice that offhand. I, I'm not, I, yeah, they're I'm like transparent. Not noticing. That's yeah, it's like transparent like magic in, uh, like beams, like blocks. With oh, like, that's really cool. Yeah, you can see them up in the sky. But then you go to like where the Sigic base is, right? It's kind of like this, what seems like an underground place. You walk onto a portal and then you disappear and you show up. It's almost like it's almost like water. It's like a yeah, water it's circle liquidy. on the ground. Yeah. yeah, it's like liquidy. And you go in it and then you pop up in their in their base. My assumption was that that was taking you down into the ground because it's like you go into the liquid but that may not actually be accurate that portal if it's a portal could probably take you wherever that base happens to be so it doesn't necessarily mean that that base is on the island it just means right. the entrance to the base is on the island yeah that's that's true it could just be in a puffy cloud floating above or whatever <laughs> right or a little machination of uh you know construction kind of like the clockwork city or yeah. it could be on or, one of the moons for for all we know or to anybody who's ever seen the console commands for where um mike the liar goes in skyrim he's got that little box called elsewhere maybe maybe that's maybe, where the, maybe, maybe that's where the strategic order is that little mike, box called mike the elsewhere. liar's box <laughs> Mike, is the uh, Sigic Order in your box? <laughs> this one, this one says possibly. Well, thanks, Mike. That was great. Um, all right. Well, I think that's pretty Does that much mean it. He was lying though, or was he telling the truth by saying possibly both? Um, oh. <laughs> so, but the island really isn't that interesting, other than the information about you know it disappearing and coming back, and uh, right. it's very pretty. It, it looks like a Somerset pretty. Island. There's like yeah. a big mountain kind of in it, and there's a little passageways that go up into that. Yeah, it's, it's smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a small little guy. So that's, I think that this episode will cover <laughs> the Sigic Order and the Isle of, of Artam, because there really isn't that much more to say about Artam. So right. there you go, friends. Uh, yeah. Any other and last thoughts? if you're thoughts? confused, that just means we did the Sigic Order well. <laughs> yes, because it's very confusing because we just get right. these little glimpses into them and then that's it. We don't know much yeah. else. So I do recommend because uh, it, it was brought up in chat. Um, I do recommend <laughs> if you uh, don't play ESO or do play ESO when you haven't done the Sigic Order quest line, it came with Somerset. It is a very good quest line. Um, very it just well written. takes forever because you're going to yes, go close I was going to say that was definitely a bit of a learning curve on their quest design structure. <laughs> it is very, yeah. very tedious yeah. as so, a quest design structure. The only thing that powered me through it was that I wanted to see the next part of the story so much. Right. So like, right. It really it, doesn't take that much time, but you have to be very intentional. Not, Here's what they do. It's they, just not great. They're like, there's a bunch of portals and they're in like mm, Southwestern Tamriel. And it's like yeah, across like three different zones and you're like, right. okay. And then you open up a map and it has like all of that area with little dots for where the portals might be. And then you have yeah. to go to each of those little zones and each of the zones. So let's say you go to uh, Somerset and 
I don't remember if Somerset's included in the list, but I'm pretty much you pretty sure you went to all of them. Yeah, uh, I think you went pretty much everywhere. And there's the like part. four or five portals in Somerset, and you had they're not on your mini map. You just have to like run around. Yeah, they give and you try a map to, with X's. Yeah, try I to mean, match I up guess the map. There's an add-on for it was yeah. uh, mentioned in chat. Um, but if you're on console like me as a main, you just l- look up where to get them. You I, just gotta like, go run around, try to find them all, and then you close a, them, and then you yeah. go to the next zone, and you close them. It takes a few hours, and then you get through it, and then you go back, and you're like, "Cool, I did it." awesome right and they're like yeah go talk to this other guy over here in the other hallway and you're like go talk to the other guy in the hallway and they're like hey we got more portals for you to close right and you just do it again and then you do it again and it's just like yeah and it's like no the design of the quests are not great however yeah like i said the story to it is very cool it it fleshed out the sigic order quite a bit it's actually where a lot of the information we were able to present a lot of the tie-ins come from like what is added from ESO. So yeah. it's definitely good, but not portrayed in the best yeah. way. Play it on your fastest mount yeah, <laughs> and run around. And uh, I, I have an add on that. When you open up the map, it puts it, it like pins it on your screen, like a mini map. And so you oh, can okay. see it. And then I've got a mini map one also. So I can kind of tell if I'm in the right area and then you get a little, little like kind of glows and you know, you're getting close and then cool. Yeah. So there's ways to make it easier, but uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That part is kind of a grind, uh, but that's, that's it for the Sigic order. Lotus, you got anything else going on you want to share? Uh, no, we actually, um, w- we, had a uh episode of tales but then we had, it took a little while to get all fixed up and get out so we're a little off kilter schedule wise hopefully with father's day this weekend um on when we normally try to record or gonna try to squeeze it in over the next day or so but mm-hmm. um you're a dog dad you should probably take the day I, off yeah i was gonna say boots is in the background just being happy and round uh <laughs> round yeah she when she when she sits still she looks like a hershey's kiss oh, man. Uh, but <laughs> weird <laughs> but um yeah so hopefully we'll have another episode of tales for everybody uh soon enough and um yeah other than that I, i'm just very excited we get necrom next week on console um yeah, yeah. which is i really need more time to play video games because i have been enjoying diablo i've obviously oh, still man. been enjoying elder scrolls online i want to get back to daggerfall because i haven't had any time to stream and i left off with that and it's like i'm still trying to get through that game it's like there are not enough hours in the day why won't somebody just make it so that i have more hours of free time in my day there you not go. more hours of stuff well that require my if attention we, if we uh how many more subs do we need to make this full time for you? <laughs> if we got 10 oh, times wow. the number of subs. Great. Perfect. You can go full time with this, buddy. <laughs> Gr- great. I'm not going to put that pressure on anybody. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, also, since the last show, I don't think it, I, it's kind of hidden in shadow. But anybody that's just chilling on the live feed, I redid my giant nerd shelf behind me. It's very similar, but I had to reposition a lot of stuff because I got so much stuff uh, (laughs) and I didn't know where to put it. And Hermaeus Mora, that little tentacly blob in the middle, there he is just chilling. I reorganized everything so that it's designed around him. Um, He's the centerpiece. That statue is intense. (laughs) Yeah, I saw I remember seeing it at uh... It, Vegas. The design of it is amazing. Like the artwork for it is phenomenal. It's definitely their best statue yet. And I'm not just saying that because I simp for Hermes Mora, but <laughs> the thing weighs like six pounds. <laughs> Wait, your Hermes Mora thing isn't like a sexual thing, right? No, no, yeah, no. That's no. just, I, I mean, tentacles. I don't know. It, well, yeah, I know. A lot of people have the tentacle thing. I, I think of it more <laughs> of like a cleaning sponge full of knowledge. That's amazing. That's a. I'm never going to look at the cleaning sponge is ever the same. <laughs> All right. Well, go check out Lotus's stuff and uh, no judgment. If you've got a Hermes Mora sexual <laughs> yeah, thing, I mean, people got a thing for Mora. Hey, you do you. You're not bothering. Don't hurt else. anyone else. That's cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah, hey, you, uh, you got to do what you got to do. You got to do it. Yep. I'm not king shaming. I'm not king. I was just cu- I was just <laughs> confused just because totally it just curious. crossed my mind for the first time that that might be why he likes Hermes Mora so much. Nope. Maybe I just like That's really all. like. Yeah, it's good. I don't know. I like I said, I always just think of him as a very large cleaning sponge, just very articulate. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I was just I was my face was 
I'm learning something new about somebody I consider a close friend that I never would have realized before. That's what the face was. The face wasn't, ew, gross. The face was, is this what's actually going Highly on? Highly inquisitive. Right. Like, really? I never considered that. Okay, anyway. Yeah, no, um, to be fair, in terms of neutrality, it's another thing. I, I People always joke that I don't tend to, like, I sit there and listen to sides even when I'm like, it's so apparent that you are not interested in what, you know, that person's argument is i was like yeah but they're entitled to say it even if i don't like it sure i was yeah. like i can listen to it and i feel like hermes more like is all about that and it ties right into the subjects they're just listening to everybody's crap <laughs> <laughs> right yeah from secret portals and whatever just secret yeah, yeah secret portals just in the side of the room yeah well uh uh, that's Lotus's stuff. <laughs> yeah, and also we have derailed chat. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, man, all, all sorts of fun things. Uh, my stuff's <laughs> over at robotsradio.net. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the Starfield lore, lore cast is now in full swing. Go check it out if you want. Like the episode we did today was about um, New Atlantis and some of the details that we were able to figure out from the Starfield Direct that weren't mentioned, but are very cool. So go check that out. It's up on whatever podcast you're listening to this on, or you can watch the video. It's up on my Robots Radio YouTube channel. So just search Rob Robots Radio YouTube, and you'll find it. And uh, thanks for being here, everybody. Lotus, this is fun as usual. Have a yeah, wonderful rest of your always week. Always an entertaining night. Yeah, chat, thanks for being here. You have a wonderful week, and everybody yep. have a uh, have an awesome time out there in yep. the world doing Enjoy awesome Necrom, things. I was going to say. We all have it by next Tuesday. So. Yeah, go, go play more games, because there's definitely a lot of good games to play. All right, yep. we'll see you next time, everybody. See you later. See ya. Thanks for joining us. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach me on Twitter at robots underscore radio or Lotus of Doom at Lotus of Doom. Also, you can join us on the Robots Radio Discord channel. You can easily just search Robots Radio Discord on Google or check the description underneath the podcast. Also, this podcast is recorded live every week on Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific on the Robots Radio channels on Twitch, YouTube, and on Facebook. So just search Robots Radio on any of those platforms come join us we'd love to chat with you while we record the show or before or after either way just come hang out with us and if you're looking for more information about my shows and the shows on the robots radio network go to robotsradio.net for all the information about all the shows on the network including the robots radio rocket club where i help both new and existing podcasters to grow their shows build their audiences and create the best podcast they possibly can all of that at robotsradio.net we'll see you next time